You have to make sure you'll let us know if we have make sure we have a quorum, Lauren or Kenny. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> hey Pam. Hey everybody, welcome. Uh-oh. Hey Ross. Hi, John. Hi, Susan. Susan, you're Tim tonight. <laughs> Good showing. Here, do we have, do we, have Dominic? we have a quorum. We're good. <clears throat> do we? Yeah. All right, Mallory, the kids are okay. Great. Hey, Dominic. Okay, great. Well, then we will call to order uh, at 632 the um, October 6th meeting of the City of Birmingham Parks and Recreation Board. Do we have a roll call, please? Roll call. Heather Carmona. Present. Susan Collins. Oh, oh, Lauren, you have to unmute them all. I'm going to, I'll help with that. Oh. Okay. okay. I'm here. Okay. I'll wait till she's done. Ellie, I unmuted you. I'm here. <laughs> Mallory, Ellie. I'm here. There we go. <laughs> Hi. Ross. Jeff joined too. Hey, Jeff. Hey, how are you? I think you'll have hey, to wow, start hey. over, Connie. Yeah, that's fine. It's okay. I'm waiting until Lauren's done. Yeah, it said the host was muting everybody. We're good. Okay, you want to run the, run the roll call again, Connie? Yeah, Heather Carmona. Present. Susan Collins. Here. Pam Graham. Here. Ross Kaplan. Here. Eleanor, uh, Eleanor Noble. Here. Dominic Polis. I know I saw Dominic. Uh, no, I'm on. Well, Dominic, I'm, you're on? I'm connected. I'm here. Awesome. Uh, John Rushi. I'm here. Uh, James Hayden. Mallory Windsor. Here. And Jeffrey LaBelle, he'll be our guest tonight. Present. Thank you. Hmm. Great. Well, welcome, everyone. Uh, we are going to go to the next item, which is the approval of the minutes of our Tuesday, September 1st meeting. Any comments? Suggested revisions, review? If, if none? Do we have a motion to approve? I move that we approve the minutes. It's John. Moved by John. Do we have a second? Second. Approve the minutes. Is that okay. you, Ellie? No, it was uh, Susan. Susan. Yep. Okay, I'll do roll call. Heather Carmona. Yes. Susan Collins. Yes. Pam Graham. Yes. Ross Kaplan. Yes. Ellen, <clears throat> Ellie Noble. Yes. Dominic Poulos. Yes. John Rushi. Yes. Thank you. Okay. The next item on our setting, agenda. I'm sorry to interrupt. Is there a setting that would let me mute myself, like when my dogs are going to bark, which is like right now? <laughs> because it's set, Lauren, so that if I mute myself, I can't unmute myself. Right. Are you on a phone? No, oh. I'm on the computer. Hmm. And I'm going to mute myself right now, and then it's going to, I'm going to try to unmute myself, and it's going to say you're not allowed. I have to wait for the host to unmute me. Right. Eric, are you there? Yep, 
I can change the security setting, but that's normally our normal security is to lock it down. Okay. Yeah. So we have to turn them when they want to speak. We will unmute them, right? Correct. Okay. Can I, with that being said, may I go over some Zoom keeping, Heather, before we get started? Yeah. Okay. So thank you, everyone. Um, just a little housekeeping uh, or Zoom keeping, if you will. Um, so stay muted, please, uh, unless you're speaking. Um, raise your hand in order to be called on, and then we will unmute you. Um, the chair, Heather Kamona, will be will call on you um, once you've been identified as raising your hand to speak. Um, for the public on the call tonight, uh, thank you and welcome. Um, when you want to speak, um, give us your name and address um, when you're called on and unmuted, of course. And if you're on a cell phone calling in tonight, um, the star six feature is the mute and unmute. Um, if you need that, and then star nine is the raise the hand on the phone. So we see that on the Zoom screen. Um, and with that, um, thank you. I'll turn over the chair. All right. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, the, next, the next item on the agenda is to welcome our um, new uh, board member, Susan Collins. Welcome, Susan. Susan was appointed an alternate just within the last few months, so she's had a very fast trajectory. And uh, um, Suzanne, I don't know if you want to have a couple comments. I know you have lived in the city for about 15 years, have a daughter who's a skater, and um, do you just want to have a quick comment on your interest in the parks board? Or? Sure. Um, thank you. I was lucky to get on quite quickly. Um, I'm excited to be on the parks and rec board. I've thought about it for the last 10 years and I'm really busy. Um, a lot going on right now, so I'm very excited to be involved in hopefully um, some new projects. And um, we are at the rink a lot, so I understand the ice skating rink, and we love the parks and the trails as well. So thank you. Welcome. We don't have to have an official vote, do we, Lauren? She's been appointed by commission, correct? Correct. Okay. Yep. Just the introduction. It was just our introduction today. Our official introduction. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Great. Okay, we will move into the agenda of our meeting. Um, as Lauren stated, we're we're really happy to see a lot of um, folks logging in. Um, the the intent of the meeting today is to have a, a, a lot of the meeting dedicated towards um, answering questions um, and informing you and providing information around the Parks and Recreation Bond. Um, so we are we are happy to do that, and um, I know we did get some feedback. A call went out last week to uh, residents to submit questions in writing by Friday, and I believe we received about uh, eight or so questions. And we will introduce um, our uh, communications consultant and team, Anne-Marie Erickson from Van Dyke Horn, will uh, help us walk through these, these questions and we'll be prepared as a board to answer any questions you have. Um, I think the, the process here is we will, we will review the questions that were submitted and have Q&A after those, and then we will open up for any additional questions um, from uh, public and residents that are, are participating now uh, live. So with that said, I will turn it over to you, Anne-Marie. Okay, thank you, Heather. Thanks everyone for being here tonight. Um, I think anytime we talk about voting on anything, a proposal, a candidate, it's really important to inform yourself as well as you can. And so I applaud those people who sent in their questions in advance and those of you who are able to join us tonight so that we can hopefully answer your questions, provide you with good information so that you can make an informed and intelligent vote on Birmingham's Parks and Recreation Bond proposal. One really important piece of business I have to do right up front is ask you when you do vote to vote your whole ballot. So flip it over because the Parks and Rec bond proposal is the very last thing on the ballot. And if you don't flip it over and go to the end, you might miss your opportunity to vote on it. So please don't do that. Please remember to vote the entire ballot and that way you'll be sure to have your opinion registered on this important issue. 
With that, I'm going to start by answering the submitted questions. In the interest of time, we prepared answers for these, but as Heather said, people will have the opportunity to ask questions um, as the meeting progresses. And so if these questions don't address your concerns or issues, or if you have other questions that you'd like to raise, please hold on and we'll get to those as well. Our first question comes from a longtime resident who lives near Linden Park expressed some concern that the park seems underutilized and believes that that really is due to a lack of parking. Would like to know if adding parking for cars or bicycles is possible at Linden Park. And our answer is that Linden Park is indeed a really wonderful park, a delightful neighborhood park, including a trail along the Rouge River. If the bond proposal is approved, a potential parking area will be one of the factors considered along with playground improvements for Linden Park. With bond funding, every <clears throat> recreation plan in the current master plan will be reviewed. That will include public input. And after that, we will do some final approvals and implementation. And if the bond is approved, Birmingham will get some new parks projects. Our second question. The bond proposal includes funding for improvements to the ice arena. What will happen if the bond is not passed? Can the arena be patched up and still remain viable? The current city budget includes $2 million for mechanical and refrigeration improvements at the ice arena. Those are deemed to be critical needs currently, and that would be the patch up portion. If the bond is approved, an estimated $3.1 million would be allocated for arena expansion and renovation. That would include a new team, lock, or new team locker rooms, more than one, a women's locker room, a meeting room, and improvements to the concessions area. With bond approval, the city will work with the public and with their consultant to combine the two phases, the $2 million for mechanical and refrigeration and the $3.1 million for expansion, and they will develop the best possible project, the most cost-effective project for the ice arena if approved. If not, the mechanical work will move forward. Question about the pickleball courts. Several questions. Where will they be located? How many courts will be constructed? And when will the construction begin? As with all projects funded by the bond proposal, the city will seek public input regarding the pickleball courts. That includes perhaps the most important question here, location. And location will determine how many courts the city is able to construct. The current estimate is about six courts. While we cannot provide an exact timeline for construction this early, the pickleball courts are among high priority projects. And so if the bond is approved, they will hit the docket fairly quickly. When the master plan was developed a few years ago, there were numerous community listening sessions where residents provided their input on plans for Poppleton Park. There was a lot of discussion and some disagreement on a parking area to serve Poppleton Park. In addition, some Poppleton residents expressed support for maintaining green space and limited sidewalks in the park. Has a decision been made on the parking area or the paths through the park? Just like every project that will be funded if the bond proposal is passed, the Poppleton Park plan will be reviewed and community input will be a critical part of that review. The current concept plan for Poppleton Park was developed back in 2016 and it does require updating. Following community engagement, the park plan will be reworked and will be presented to the city commission for final approval. This is the process for every project in the plan. And uh, Birmingham has a long and successful history of parks projects due to careful planning and resident input. And I think Poppleton Park will add to that. Poppleton Park does not allow pets. Will that change if the bond is improved? Well, actually, Poppleton Park does allow pets. Leash dogs are allowed in all public parks except in areas designated by the Department of Public Services, and those are all posted. Those include areas like playgrounds, ball fields, and other areas posted. So you can bring your dog to Poppleton Park right now. Did the ice arena and tennis building receive funding under the previous parks bond? Also, has there been any discussion regarding privatizing either facility? 
We estimate that about 3.1 million of the $11.25 million bond will be used to expand and renovate the Birmingham Ice Arena. The Birmingham Racquet Club, the tennis building, is a private facility. It does not receive any public funding. The city owns the ice arena, which is 47 years old. The ice arena has not received any bond funding in the past, and is, uh, if approved, we will see investment in the ice arena. No, <clears throat> excuse me, no discussions have been held around privatizing the ice arena. Question, I'd like to better understand how funds are allocated between Birmingham parks and specifically how funds will be allocated moving forward. I live near Haworth Park, which has not received the same level of attention as other city parks. Haworth Park did not receive improvement funds under the last bond, but it is slated for improvement funds if this bond proposal is approved. Like all parks projects funded by the new bond, a public input session will be held and that will help guide the improvements to Howard Park, Howard Park. New playground equipment is definitely part of the program for Howard Park. And another question related to Howard Park, please clarify how maintenance and upgrades are decided around parks. All Birmingham parks are maintained according to an established schedule and they're all checked daily to identify and address any unexpected needs. Parks that appear to be better maintained with newer equipment were probably improved with funds from the 2001 Parks and Recreation Bond. The proposed parks bond, if approved, will allow the city to upgrade the remaining parks. Those uh, parks include Howarth, Adams, Kenning, Poppleton, and eight other parks that have not received recent improvements. At this time, I have wrapped up all of the questions uh, that were submitted in advance and we will move to our live Q&A period. Does anyone joining this evening have any questions? If so, Heather, are you going to allow people in or am I? I have to unmute Heather. Thanks, Sarah. Um, I, I can, I, I'm sorry, say that, say that again, Anne Marie. Are you going to manage this part of the question and answer program or would you like me to? We, we can do it together if you'd like. Um, I, I did have um, actually just one thing I wanted to add um, in question, I think it was the second question on the ice arena, just to, to be clear that um, the improvements and upgrades are, we want to make sure people realize that they're going to be ADA compliant. That's an important thing I think people need to know is that we, and we don't have that. It, it is listed on the website. It is described in other material, but want to make it very clear that the improvements will all be ADA compliant. Great. Thank you. Important point. Mm -hmm. um, Lauren, hey. Eric, how are we going to entertain questions from the public? I'm not seeing hands. I think we yeah, were just taking... scouring the screens for any um, people that are on the call. Yeah, I'm not seeing any raised hand either. If there are those in the public that would like to participate, if you click on your participants list at the bottom of your screen, it should open up the participants list. At the bottom of that screen is a raise hand function, which will raise your hand on our screen so we can see that you do like to talk. And I'm still not seeing anyone with a hand raised. I'm, I'm not either. Got all eyes on deck here. We're going to not be able to miss anybody. Hmm. Well, Heather, maybe the board has some questions, and then maybe some more will have questions as we have continued conversation. Absolutely. Maybe. Oh, I see him. Dominic and I raised our hands just as a test. I, I don't really have a question, but I just wanted to see how it worked. Okay. Dominic, Dominic, did you have something? Great, great minds think alike, John. I was just <laughs> <laughs> testing the system. Yeah. All right. All right. You two smart Alex. We'll. All right. Okay. Well, why don't we move on? And we, there is an opportunity if people dial in later to the meeting. 
in um, public comment too. So some people may not be able to get to this point. They may log in later. So um, are there any, so we will open it up for a discussion among um, the board. Um, any discussion, questions, comments from the board? Ellie. Unmute. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Um, I had a, a question from a citizen of Birmingham asking me, would we ever consider doing pickleball courts indoors? And where would that be? I, I will defer to probably Lauren on this. I know all the discussions that we, that I have been part of over the last couple of years have been to look at the utilization of the existing courts. Um, so I don't know if there have been any other discussions prior to my involvement um, on internal use. Sure, I'll, I'll answer that. Um, it's generally just been outdoor courts. Uh, however, we, uh, Connie, we set up at the ice arena indoor courts the last few uh, seasons, um, our off season, which would be the summertime, and we didn't get a very large crowd. Uh, we were doing that actually in cooperation with Next. Um, they are very active with that, and um, they were at our facility, and it was a nice partnership, um, but it wasn't really busy, obviously, because the only time we had available was summer. Um, but other than that, Ellie, it hasn't been discussed uh, on the at the board level, um, and I don't think our staff, uh, Connie and Carrie, I don't think it's anything that we've contemplated um, to date. Correct. Correct, and the current cost estimate is for outdoor court, Ellie. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Ellie. Um, Susan? Yeah, I was talking to someone this afternoon and she had some questions about um, Adams Park. And um, when she looked at the rendering, she said she saw a lot on there and was wondering, are we paying for things for the school or how is that working? Because there's a school on that property. Can you tell us more yeah. about that? I will take a stab here and Amory or Lauren can plug in again. Um, I, the history and I think most I will, maybe not everyone knows that the history of Adams Park goes back a long time. Um, it's been in development and discussion for close to, if not nearly 10 years. Um, my understanding of the recent plan and concept that is, um, that is on the website is the current conceptual plan was that it was in discussions with Roper when uh, the city um, acquired the property and that there were some discussions that Roper would be part of potential improvements to, um, the, to, to the park. Um, at this time, I think again, as we've stated, we would go back to Roper. We'd have to open that up again and look at the concept plans were um, concepts. They were not construction drawings to, I think, determine whether or not those are the amenities that the neighbors at this time would um, would still think are of, of interest to them. Thank you. Laura, do you have more. anything more to add on, the his, on that? No, I don't think so. I think that really touches it, Heather. Um, and again, that's something that we have on, you know, we've had conversations about that with uh, their administration and um, that we definitely <clears throat> would reach out to Roper again. There are some site amenities of which Roper wanted to maintain at the facility and there was chats back um, quite some time ago with regard to uh, cost share for those. So, um, so definitely they were open-minded to it and um, all of that is, I mean, we'll be starting from scratch other than the concept plan and then, you know, get the design going again at, at some point, so. Great, thank you. Thanks, Susan. Uh, this is John. This ahead, is John. Hi, I, I have a, a comment uh, from a person who lives near Poppleton Park. Um, and I'm just going to look at a few of my notes. He, he talked about the uh, sidewalks going through the park and uh, said that back in 2016, there was quite a few people who objected to that, but um, they're still in the plan. 
uh, my notion is that the sidewalks and the parking lot off Woodward got a lot of attention and the parking lot off Woodward sort of overshadowed the sidewalk discussion. So I assured him that um, currently there's no mention of sidewalks in the bond discussion, even though they are currently on the concept plan, but that um, Poppleton is in the second phase for 2024 and that there will be ample time for renewed citizen input on the plan. I think I'm accurate on all those. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, Pam, you had a, a comment on that? Yeah, I, I, I agree with those comments, and um, uh, I'm glad that John was able to share some, some opinions from some, some people that live near the park, and I think there is a lot of time, but perhaps there are also people <laughs> like... <laughs> that are, uh, are in, in favor of sidewalks, that having walking paths, I, I've talked to some residents who said that parks where there's smooth walking paths, where an elderly relative could work, walk easily with a, a, a walker, or where you had a lap counter and could know how far you work, it, it could be something that's very interesting in some of the parks. And so we need to consider both the opinions of people that would like something added to a community park and, and the uh, uh, view of of others that wouldn't and I'm glad there's time to do all that and that all those opinions will be concerned regarding the previous question about Adams Park which I live near to I just wanted to add in that I think that's a really good example about how this a lot of stakeholders were considered in the development of that park plan and one of those important stakeholders was the was the school the school administration has changed and we need to go back and, and revisit whether those priorities uh, still stand and similar with the priorities of the, the neighborhood. But um, I thought that was really good that, I mean, I was one of the neighbors that were involved and I could also respect that the school and other members of the community, including across uh, Adams uh, were, were included in the development of that park. So I look forward to more of the same and um, great improvements to the park. Thank you, Pam. Any other comments from board members, John? Uh, regarding the yard signs, uh, could somebody give us an update on uh, how many we might have remaining and you know, uh, how the distribution plan is, is going? So the board, that is a resident driven activity. Um, I know there's several champions that are um, championing that effort. Mm -hmm. um, we are not necessarily distributing the signs. I know there's a few people um, that we could inform, put them in touch with the champions, but as of now, I don't know what the status is on those signs. I see. Okay, thank you. There's a few people here. We probably could get some, put them in touch with someone if they needed a sign. I don't know who can get them one. Susan's raised her hand. Susan, sorry about that. Well, that's all right. Um, I think because I'm new to the board, I'm not familiar with how this works, but um, if this, well, when this passed, hopefully, how does it work? Because you mentioned public input sessions. So is that where things start, that we have a public input session? Or how does it start, like, where to do this or where things go? Lauren, did you want to start that? You're saying if the bond is approved? Right. Like, what's the starting point then from the, the day after? And then how can, like the person I was speaking to today, I think she would like to be a part of that. And so how do we make sure that these people are a part of that? I know the city does a great job communicating it, but if I had a better understanding, I could help set that up for her. Or can you talk about process then as to what we would anticipate? I don't think we want to get too far ahead of ourselves and sort of planning out any dates or anything like right. that, but what's typically a process we would bring it back to the board and look at our priority list, I would presume. Right, uh, that's a great question, uh, Susan, of course. So uh, after the vote, yes, um, a lot of work to happen. Um, we will re-engage some of the consultants that we had, like uh, I know that's been uh, on the frequently asked questions on the city webpage, uh, bhamgov.org forward slash parks bond. Um, it lists um, potential projects that would be sort of first in the queue. 
mm -hmm. Adams Park of being um, one because um, that was designed uh, quite some time ago as a concept. And um, so we could get those consultants going. So really onboarding of consultants, of um, different vendors that would help possibly with uh, playgrounds. And so a lot of administrative work behind the scenes to get to get that going and then and then and synchronizing that, of course, um, with parks uh, and rec board meetings um, and updates. Um, and then engaging what we do with um, what we've traditionally done with um, park playgrounds is we get the neighborhood groups involved. So we reach out independently with the various neighborhood groups of which they'd be impacted by or or, or surrounding of the of the different parks. And and we do we meet with them. We invite them when we can invite them in. We'll invite them into DPS. Um, have the sit downs similar to what we did with Adams Park and when we design things at St. James. Um, we'll bring them in, review, review that, sort of design it. And then it's all final designs, plans and specs, bidding out, park board, again, back to the park board, um, a, a recommended award, take it back to the commission. So that's something to go, would go with each independent project. Um, and that being said though too, you know, budgeting would come into play, um, the commission, um, capital project expenditures, would come into play and again the priority list. So there'd be a lot of back and forth probably between the park board and the city commission and then uh, administration to help um, to move move those items along. Thank you, that's very helpful. Lauren, we would generally do always public charrettes as we've done on most other park, you know, design, correct? R right, to, and to some degree, um, right, public input, um, at the park board level, um, we generally would do that with full park development. So like Adams would be an example, uh, Booth, of course, you know, some of those uh, parks, Ross, would probably uh, warrant that. Great. Thanks, Lauren. I see we Thanks. have a couple. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to tell you, too, we have Jordan and Cindy Rose with hands raised. Yep. That's very weird. You All pick, right, you, you will. Pick one. You can unmute Jordan. Hey, Jordan. Hey, Jordan. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I just want to answer John's question with respect to signs. Um, I've got several signs. And so John or if anyone else wants to reach out to me for one, I'm happy to coordinate to get one in your hands, either drop it off or have it picked up. And um, I don't know how much supply is left, but uh, certainly for the moment, we have some to be distributed. Great, Jordan. I don't know if you want to state your address for the record or if we want sure. to know how to go about to getting that. it. Yeah, that's fine. I'm uh, at 1378 Fairfax Street is my most recent of all my various Birmingham addresses. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you for joining us tonight. Any other questions or comments you had? Um, I, I'm just here to listen, but in general, I uh, appreciate all of the hard work that uh, both the staff and this board is doing with respect to this bond. I think it's a, a really great thing. And um, I know I've been a, a resident on and off for 20 plus years. I haven't done the count, but uh, I've always appreciated the park system in our city. And certainly over the last several months with the pandemic, I've grown to really appreciate not only what we already have to offer, but the opportunities that exist for continued improvement and, and expansion of the city's offerings. And I think it's an excellent thing for the residents and visitors. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you for taking the time with us tonight. We appreciate it and your input. Thank you. And for helping to champion it. All right, Cindy. How are you, Cindy? Yeah, good to see you all. Good to see um, hear you. You can? We can. Can you hear me? Okay, we good. Um, I was actually going to answer the same question that John had. I picked up signs yesterday and there weren't very many left, um, but I think there are still a few out there. So that's it. Great. Well, thank you for championing it. Okay, I'm looking here. I don't see any other signs. Any other comments, questions from the board? Now we will move into the uh, next agenda item. I think we're good. 
All right. The next item on the agenda is the for communication and discussion. We have our uh, current board roster. Heather, as you move on, I am going to excuse myself. So yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Marie, thank you so much. And I didn't any other questions for you for Anne Marie? I should have said said that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Amory. Thank you all. It's been yeah, a good pleasure evening. The staff. Thank you. So I'm just presenting this evening just the current parks and recreation uh, roster. Thanks, Connie. Okay. And Lauren, are you presenting the golf reports? Sure. Yeah, I didn't want to go without mention too. Um, we also have um, the privilege of having uh, Mark Gerber, our finance director, on the Zoom call this evening. And I don't want to go without it, noticing you, Mark. So if, you, Mark. if whether uh, the, the finance question at the end of the meeting, if Mark still hangs on, um, if you have questions, he's available. Um, and also too, if there's any other bond questions as we get to the end of the meeting um, as well. But so the golf courses, it's our, our golf report and keeping with uh, the finance report, um, Jackie's report. Um, again, good news. Um, it's been a great season for golf. And we're, we appreciate the, the players, uh, the membership and their guests supporting the golf courses. Um, and let me see what the last... And then the announcement, the update that Jackie put together, um, some of this has already occurred, some verification of the courses, but also um, Springdale will be closing uh, first this year uh, based on weather, of course, which we're anticipating possibly mid-October, so it could be a week or two away. And then Lincoln Hills will remain open for the remainder of the season um, until the snow flies, if you will. And then the last item uh, was at the, per the request of uh, Dominic, um, at the last meeting, um, and some of you have seen the different payback schedules um, from the golf courses to the general fund, too, in the past, um, previous years. But Mark put together the schedule of golf, golf transfers, which is uh, fairly clear um, with what's happened in the past, uh, the amount um, owed and the, the payback schedule, which right now, every year, um, it's at $100,000. Um, and that's still underway right now. And you can note that also too in the finance statement that we have on the agenda item tonight too. Um, so I guess with that, any questions? I'm happy to entertain anything. I just want to comment always. I'm always impressed by Jackie's reports. I, they're absolutely phenomenal. And um, just, I'm so delighted to see the increase in play. The numbers, um, what's happened the last couple of months is made, made up for last year, which was a rough start, I remember. So um, it's great to see these numbers and the increased interest in the, in, the, in the golf course. And it looks like the weather is going to be nice for at least another week and a half. So maybe yeah, I bet you there's going to be a lot more rounds played. That's great. No, I, I know. It is great. Thank you for that. Jackie's working hard as the, the whole team is. Um, John Pierce, uh, her, her assistant manager, he's generally out of Springdale. Um, but they've crossed over the 55,000 rounds, um, as you note, from the golf report through September 29th, um, which is great. We haven't seen those numbers in a, in a few years. So... Um, we just keep doing what we're doing and get people out to have fun and enjoy our courses. Right. Kelly, you have a comment? Um, I'm just wondering because of COVID, I know it, it really was a wonderful thing to have golf courses here and to have something for people to do out of doors. Um, I noticed the food and beverage and uh, the sales were a little bit off, probably because of the gathering together in, inside spaces was not a great thing to do this year. I'm just wondering if there's anything that she learned from COVID. I don't know if we're still gonna be this way next year, but it could very well be. Is there anything in place that would change things from normal gathering to a COVID type thing for next year as well? You no, know, it's hard to say, as you know, everything's changing sort of day by day. Um, 
the one thing that did happen that, that we weren't able to have liquor sales until the weekend of Memorial weekend um, or right after the weekend actually. So, so that was a little later start than, than normal. So that's reflective in the beverage uh, revenues um, and the food. Uh, fortunately, there's a lot of groups and outings that Jackie's been preparing food for. Um, so that's helped with our food uh, revenue. But um, but you're right, she doesn't, there aren't people congregating in the clubhouses, so they're not coming in grabbing a sandwich or a salad um, or a grilled burger. So that, that volume is down quite significantly because people are, you know, they, after they're done with their round, they grab their bags and maybe grab a, a water or something and they head to their cars. So, um, but I think um, we'll know more and I'll definitely keep the board updated and, and we'll have a subcommittee meeting later um, in the year where Jackie will join us. I have a, I have a question, kind of triggered by Ellie's question. Um, for the winter, have, have we ever looked into cross country skiing at one of the golf courses in the wintertime? Yes, actually, Lincoln Hills is uh, open for that, John. Um, okay. Every year we have cross country skiing, snowshoeing, people that come in and wander around, and we generally will have the clubhouse open for hot chocolate, restroom facilities, and a nice fireplace. But um, we're, we don't think we're going to have the in, inside open this year, and, and we're still contemplating the, um, the course amenity for that. But we also have the sledding hill at uh, Booth Park uh, for the winter, which will definitely be open. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Any other questions on the full golf report off for items? Okay, seeing none, um, the next item uh, under communication is an update, a verbal project update. Is this you, Carrie? Yes, hello. Good evening. Yep. Um, I'm going to share my screen because I have pictures and, uh, and a short uh, drone video to share with you. So bear with me here. Oh, not letting me show the, I apologize. I can't show the drone video, unfortunately. So you will do the pictures. It was there earlier, but um, I'll try it again in a minute. So, all right. Bear with me, sorry about that. Okay, it's not working. <laughs> I wanted to show you a few um, pictures of Kenning Park ball fields. So the project update would be that Kenning Park ball fields project is officially closed out. We've um, we finalized punch list items with the contractor just last week and um, they, they worked on some reseeding of areas that needed touch up work because of course you know we did have little league on the fields this season and so there was a little bit more um, things to accomplish this fall. So that has been done and we have um, received all of our closing documentation and um, just wanted to make that formal announcement for you all. Um, my next project update would be that um, we recently performed um, some maintenance at Court and Lake at the waterfall. You may have noticed that um, there was a log across the top of the waterfall, so we had to turn off, if you will, the waterfall and um, reroute the water in order to clear the debris. We took care of all the debris. We worked in a partnership with the fire department. They actually took a boat out there, one of their training boats out onto the lake. They um, help us cut up the, the log and um, 
JH Hart was there to remove the log and we had a towing company, Bob Adams as well. So it was a uh, cooperation of departments and contractors in order to get that done. Um, and we were able to perform some um, annual maintenance while that was occurring as well. Um, Barnum Park uh, electrical additions. We are currently out to bid for electrical improvements at Barnum Park, which include um, adding some lighting features to our, our um, flagpole, the sculpture. Uh, we also have the promenade that goes from the central promenade over towards the arch. That little um, area of pathway currently has no bollards. We will be adding bollard lights to that area as well. And bids are due on Friday of this week. So you will see uh, at your November meeting um, the results of that bid opening. We did budget for this project in our 2021 uh, approved budget. And then with that, I'd like to turn it over to Connie because she is going to update us on some ice arena activity. Yes, so we are in our third week of the Birmingham Ice Arena being open. We started off with organized sports, which is considered our figure skating club, our hockey organizations and our seasonal contractors. We are phasing in phase two is what I am calling it. Starting Saturday, we are going to do online registration for our Learn to Skate program. Um, and then our phase three will be offering our open skating sessions. We have the arena set up in a way where you enter and exit at various directions of the facility. We have a video on the city website that shows how to enter and exit. And um, I'm very excited that we are open. The concession stand isn't currently open because of the executive order, but we hope to soon open if, if that gets lifted. But again, the arena is open. We are doing online, re online registration this Saturday, and I'm quite excited about it. Great. Honey, I, I have a question. It goes, um, you know, just got the city newsletter this past week, and I noticed there was a mention about um, the ability to continue to request park space. And at our last meeting, we had a discussion about the increased um, amount of people who had been requesting fitness classes. Is that, um, now that the weather is beginning to change, is that number still, or, or I guess what I'm looking for is sort of what was, it, do we have like a total number to date? Um, <clears throat> It was 300 um, something trying, at our last meeting, I think. Yeah, it's. I'm gonna say we're hitting about 400 right now. They're still coming in. Um, I'm finding spaces for them. We do have soccer at several of our parks, but I'm able to get them into the different parks. Um, tennis is right. still booming. Every, I mean, everything is still is still occurring. Now we're getting into some weddings, which is fun. Um, Springdale Shelter, the rentals this year. I think was uh, we had 97 rentals at Springdale Shelter. 97 rentals at Springdale Shelter. So um, everything's everything's booming, and we're doing it all on with RecPro online. So mm -hmm. it's been a great program that we invested in. Good. Thank you, Lauren. Just um, Heather um, Jeffrey wants to has his hand up, so I just unmuted oh, him. Sorry, Jeff. I apologize for that. Yeah, thanks. Go ahead. I, I, more of a comment. I just, um, you know, as uh, you know, Connie, I just wanted to commend the work you guys have done in the hockey rink. Um, my my son has been doing the mini mites there the last few weeks, and just I think the process, the protocols, the spacing. I think just think everything. The the whole experience has been very positive. So just wanted to call out job well done. Thank you. Great, right, Susan. Um, Connie, you mentioned that um, open open skate will come in eventually. Is there a time frame on that, or is it when the governor opens, or what are we? Well, like I said, I'm phasing it. So phase one was organized sports. Okay. Phase two is our learn to skate. I'm looking at the end of the month to do phase three, which would oh. be our open skate. Oh, wonderful! Great. So within a couple of weeks. Great. Okay, anybody else here? Any other comments from 
Questions of the board. All right, so any other updates, project updates? All right. If not, we will move into the next agenda, agenda item, which is unfinished business. Any members of the board, Lauren, have a comment? Oh, um, I just think, thank you. No, I just want to actually, it's unfinished business. It's our park uh, rules and regulations of which um, the board gave us a lot of work to do on those uh, last meeting. And since tonight we figured we wanted to devote a lot of our time and attention to the uh, Parks and Recreation bond discussion, uh, we will have that, that will return uh, to you at our next meeting. Just Thank as an update, thanks. Okay, any items of unfinished business? All right, next agenda item is new business. Any members of the board have an item of new business you'd like to bring to the table? I'm looking down at you right now, Jeffrey, I don't wanna lose you. Okay, if there are no items of new business, we will turn it over back to open to the public for items that are not on the agenda. Heather, may I ask a question? Oh, sure. Um, Cindy. Yep, go ahead. Sorry. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I seem to have lost the ability to raise my hand here, so I apologize. Mm -hmm. um, the question is for Carrie. If I could just ask Carrie a quick question about Barnum. We, um, as you all know, these parks have just been incredibly utilized over the course of the last number of months. And um, if the, and Carrie, thank you for getting <laughs> the electrical bits. Um, if it's not coming um, to the parks board until the November meeting, my question is, can they actually get some lights in before winter? No, it will be a spring project, Cindy. Again, oh shoot. All right, well, that's extremely disappointing because I think people are going to be out there till the last possible minute um, this year. All right, thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Any other items uh, from the public? Lauren? <laughs> Sorry, just to let you know, I just admitted um, Jack Burns was in the waiting room, so I think I just let him in. Not sure if he okay. wants to listen or has any questions, but I'm sort of watching to see if anyone else has any questions too, Heather. Okay. Jack, if you're interested in making a comedy of, of public comment or any item. Uh, good at this point. Thank, I'm all set at this point. Thank you. Okay, good. Want to make sure we weren't missing you. <laughs> All right, any, we're looking closely here. All right, I'm not seeing anything else. Any other comments from members of the board? Okay, we will do a, a last call for items on the, not on the agenda for public comment. One last, I'm not seeing any. Okay, uh, so we will conclude our meeting with the uh, next regular meeting of the Parks and Recreation Board will be on Tuesday, November 10th. Um, I will say that there will be other opportunities again, you can email. Um, we will keep you updated on any other information regarding the park spawn on the city's website as well. So thank you for everyone, residents that are attending tonight and for your participation. And have a good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, good night everybody. Pam, did you raise your hand? Oh, okay. <laughs> She's waving bye. <laughs> I gotcha. Bye. Have a good night, everyone. Mm -hmm.